I'm doing a new book at the moment called Epiphany, which is uh, based on a series of interviews with people about how they discovered their talent. I'm fascinated by how people got to be there. Uh, it's really prompted by a conversation I had with a wonderful woman who may, most people have never heard of. She's called Gillian Lynn. Have you heard of her? Some have. She's a choreographer and everybody knows her work. She did Cats and Phantom of the Opera. She's wonderful. I used to be on the board of the Royal Ballet in England, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, Anyway, Gillian and I had lunch one day. I said, how did you get to be a dancer? And she said it was interesting. When she was at school, she was really hopeless. And the school in the 30s wrote to her parents and said, we think Gillian has a learning disorder. She couldn't concentrate. She was fidgeting. I think now they'd say she had ADHD. Wouldn't you? But this was the 1930s, and ADHD hadn't been invented you know, at this point. So it wasn't an available condition. You know, people, <laughs> people, people weren't aware they could have that. Anyway, she sent, went to see this, um, this specialist, so this oak panel room, and, and she was there with, uh, with her mother, and she was led and sat on this uh, chair at the end, and she sat on her hands for 20 minutes while this man talked to her mother about all the problems Gillian was having at school. And at the end of it, um, because she was disturbing people, her homework was always late and so on, a little kid of eight, in the end, uh, the, uh, the doctor went and sat next to Gillian and said, Gillian, I've listened to all these things that your mother's told me, I need to speak to her privately. So she said, he, she said, wait here, we'll be back, we won't be very long, and, and, uh, and they went and left her. But as they went out the room, he turned on the radio that was sitting on his desk. And when they got out the room, he said to her mother, just stand and watch her. And um, the minute they left the room, she said she was on her feet, moving to the music. And they watched for a few minutes, and he turned to her mother, and he said, you know, Mrs. Lynn, Gillian isn't sick, she's a dancer. <laughs> Take her to a dance school. I said, what happened? said, she did. I can't tell you so how wonderful it was. We walked in this room, and it was full of people like me. People who couldn't sit still. People who had to move to think. Who had to move to think. They did ballet, they did tap, they did jazz, they did modern, they did contemporary. She was eventually auditioned for the Royal Ballet School. She became a soloist. She had a wonderful career at the Royal Ballet. She eventually graduated from the Royal Ballet School, found her own company, the Gillian Dance Company, met Andrew Lloyd Webber, she's been responsible for some of the most successful musical theatre productions in history, she's given pleasure to millions, and she's a multi-millionaire. Somebody else might have put on medication and told her to calm down. <laughs> now, I think... <laughs> our education system has mined our minds in the way that we strip-mined the earth for a particular commodity. And for the future, it won't serve us. We have to rethink the fundamental principles on which we're educating our children. within us. When I asked you how intelligent you are, it's the wrong question. The real question is how are you intelligent? The question is not how creative are you, it's how are you creative? And if we can flip our education to get to a better sense of human capacity, then I think we'll have a better chance of understanding and making sense of the world within us and the world around us. By the way, there was a wonderful quote from H.G. Wells, the uh, science fiction writer in the early 20s. He said, civilization is a race between education and catastrophe. Now, it may or may not be the case, but what we do know is that the great bridge between the two worlds that we live in is education. And I think we have to rebuild it so that we can build a bridge to the future. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's make a pact. We must pray.
my salvation back where there is love I'll be there gonna make a change for once in my life I'll reach out my hand to you it's gonna feel real good I'm gonna make a difference gonna make Just call my name and I'll be a summer's there. disregard, a broken bottle top, and a one man soul. They follow each other on the wind, you know, cause they got nowhere to go. That's why I want you to know. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking you to change. A better place Take a look at yourself And make a change You've been hit by You've been struck by A smooth criminal She was more like a beautiful queen From a movie scene I said don't mind but what do you mean I am the one Wanna dance on the floor In the world she told me her name was Billie Jean She caused a scene And every head turned with eyes that dreamed of being the one Wanna dance on the floor In the wild For your life inside this killer thriller tonight They told him don't you ever come around here Don't wanna see your face, you better disappear The fire's in their eyes and their words are really here So beat it you better run, you better do what you can Don't want to you see no girl, girl don't be my man I am the you one to But then it can't you, it's not my so son But you want to be bad, just be there You and I must be there